For me, this show is real. It's, I'm really talking to you. I'm really connecting to you because for me, it's real. And I mean it, I'm not. What I'm, what I'm talking about, the thing, I'm just gonna be honest with you because I really wanna connect with you, okay? I really wanna, I really want that. And if, if it's real for me, then it's more likely to be real for you. I'm being real and I, it's not like I'm talking to nobody because I know you're really there. Because if you weren't there, I wouldn't be talking to you, would I? So you, and you are there because you are, aren't you? So, and I appreciate you being there. Thank you for watching this show. And I know you're there because if you weren't there, I wouldn't be talking to you, would I? So, I mean, the only way that I wouldn't be talking to you and connecting with you, hopefully, is if you, if no, literally nobody watches this show, but if one person watches it, then it's you, isn't it? It's you. So thank you, thank you, and I appreciate that. And I'm trying to connect to you, and hopefully, hopefully I am. But I'm, for me, it's real. And, and because it's real, you know, I'm not always gonna be, and because I'm trying, I've committed to doing this, I'm committing to do this every week, and then, I'm not always gonna be in the best mood. I'm not always gonna be like walking on air. I'm not always gonna be having the best time. To do it every week and for it to be real, sometimes I'm gonna be in a bit of a crap mood. And this week, I've been kind of a bit grumpy and I've also been a bit fed up. And, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. Today's <laughs> been a bit of a disaster. I'm here in London at my brother and sister-in-law's house in Leightonstone. It's a really nice place. Um, but I wasn't meant to be here. I was meant to, I was going to pick up my mum and my stepdad from the airport, from Stansted Airport this morning. And uh, I got up at half past three so that I could be ready to leave for half four, so that I would have three hours to get to Stansted to collect them for half past seven. But when I got there and I parked the car in the car park, which costs 10 pounds, I got out and I walked towards the, to the airport. And it was then that I realized it was 7.30 in the evening that they arrived. And it was sort of their fault because they told me it was 7.30 in the morning, but it was mostly, I take responsibility and it was mostly my fault for not checking. So that was a little bit annoying. And um, after I realized that I was 12 hours early to pick up my mum and my stepdad from the airport, I went to McDonald's and I, I needed to go to the toilet. The toilet was busy, so I went to the disabled toilet and then I was in the disabled toilet and there was a knock on the door, so I ignored it, because the door was clearly locked. But there was another knock on the door. It just, whoever it was, just kept on knocking. They kept on knocking. And I was like, can you stop knocking, please? That's what I said in a kind of shirty sort of voice. And it stopped. But then somebody tried to open the door and it, I just knew it was the cleaner. I could hear it like a bucket and I could just hear it was a cleaner. So I was like, there's somebody in here. Anyway, the cleaner went away and then the knocking came back. Somebody was knocking again, just a little knock and then another little knock. And it was just really persistent. And I was like, can you stop knocking? And I might've said for fuck's sake, I might've said for fuck's sake. And I was thinking in my head, this had better be a little old lady in a wheelchair with a turtle head coming out. Is it, you know, sorry, sorry, that was gross. Because otherwise, I'm gonna be furious. And um, anyway, I opened the door and there was nobody there. So somebody was playing knock a door run or something like that on me. And anyway, I wasn't happy about it. Um, but that, it's just been one of those weeks. It's been really hot, which I'm not a big fan of heat. I don't really like it. I prefer it to be cold. I'm moaning a bit. But I'm allowed to moan. I'm going to do one of these shows every single week because I've committed that to myself to do that. So anyway, what can we do when things are going a bit crap or worse? What can we do if we're really worried about something terrible happening or if we're stressed? Yeah, so...
my mood hasn't been that great and I want to just be straight up with you all and I want my show to be of some value and to be to, to be helpful. I want to be of service if I can. As I mentioned before, in 2015, I began two and a half years of cognitive behavioural therapy. It started off on the NHS. It started off with, uh, I think it was five or six sessions that I got free. The old thoughts in the old brain box were a little bit um, doomy, a little bit doom laden and nihilistic. And, I, and like, uh, to be honest, it felt like I wasn't going to make it to old age, if you see what I mean. <laughs> yeah, so it had to be done. I had to, it was just like cognitive behavioural therapy, CBT or death. It was CBT or death, basically. So I chose CBT. I chose going private and spending, spending quite a bit of money. Um, but but it but it was a you know in the in the grand scheme of things it was more than worth it. Prioritizing my mental health and learning some stuff which I needed to know. Now, cognitive behavioral therapy is I would recommend it. I would recommend it to anybody. I think it's a fantastic thing to do. You learn an, an incredible amount about yourself. It's an active kind of therapy. It involves a bit of work. You don't get results for nothing. You don't, you don't just sit there and are passively told everything. You have to, you have to really think and you have to do some worksheets and some homework, but it's good. It's, you find out about yourself and you learn about yourself and you learn about, and, and you learn how to change and how to cope. But I'm going to cut straight to the chase. There were some really, really, really fantastic um, worksheets that I was given that sort of teach you how to cross-examine your negative thoughts or your negative or your fears. What cross-examine them like a kind of like a lawyer would, and it helps you to kind of break things down that you're afraid of happening or that you're worried about. It helps you to break them down and see things for what they really are and to reassess them in a very productive and helpful way. Now, I'm not a qualified therapist, so in many ways, you, you know, you might say, I don't know what I'm talking about. But what I've done is I've paraphrased um, one of these worksheets and basically I've made my own. So I hope that today, uh, between us, we're going to get some therapy done. Okay, so if you'd like to join me for some therapy, let's do some therapy together. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, and non-binary folk, everyone's welcome here. May I introduce to you the TARS Henry Mood Stabilising Algorithm. If you want to see the full sheet at any time for free and use it, you can access it. It's just on my Instagram, okay? And it will always be on my Instagram for you to see any time you want. You can just go through the questions, okay? Um, and oh, hang on. Oh, yeah, I ran out of room. So question number eight is at the bottom. OK, so um, we're going to today we're going to do this therapy. We're going to do something that is basically a paraphrasing of uh, one of the most effective for me uh, parts of the cognitive behavioral therapy that I did. My amazing therapist, what uh, she she gave me. Uh, these sheets to take home and I've still got them at home. I haven't got one with me so I can't show you a proper one but this is what I've made up basically. Uh, essentially this is a cognitive behavioural therapy practice okay. I'm not pretending that I've come up with this myself. Yeah I've, I've written this particular version of it and um, put my name on the top of it but uh, yeah so it's not official, it's not um, standard and please feel free to completely ignore it. But I do think this could help anybody. More importantly, it could help you. The Tars Henry Mood Stabilising Algorithm, it's a winning formula that um, consists of eight questions which will help you to really clarify what's your problem. What your problem is, what your what what is the thing that's really disturbing and upsetting you, and 
it helps you to cross-examine it, like I said, um, as if you're putting it on trial in a court and you're putting this worry or fear that you've got on trial in your brain. You work through my algorithm and by the end of it, you'll be feeling much better. And uh, if you don't feel much better, then you've got 100% guarantee that you can have all of your money back, okay? And because it's free, you get nothing, okay? But feel free to try it, because it is free. So you are free to try it. So question one, let's, let's, let's do this, let's do this. Question one, what is the horrible thing or situation that you are worried may happen? What is the worst possible outcome? Okay, so years ago, I was on a work night out and it's another one of the reasons why I don't drink anymore. I went to a work night out and I ate one of those cheeseburgers which had a big um, skewer, like a kebab stick through it, like a, a long wooden stick about with a point at the end, about this big, right? And I'd had a few jars and I was eating this cheeseburger and I don't know how it happened, but I basically sw ended up swallowing half a cocktail stick. I cannot believe that, that I did that now. I don't know how it happened, but I swallowed a cocktail stick, like half of it. I bit, basically bit off a chunk of it and swallowed it. It doesn't even seem realistic, but that, that did happen, I promise. And I completely panicked and freaked out, but I just drank a lot of fluids, more beer. I drank a lot more beer. And um, and tried not to worry about it. And the next day, um, I, I basically thought to myself, right, if I'm still alive in two weeks or a month, then I'm probably going to be okay. And I googled it, and all I could find examples of was of of um, I was trying to find like what happens if you eat a cocktail stick? Will you be okay if you eat a cocktail stick? All I could find examples of was dogs that had eaten half a cocktail stick or a cocktail stick, and. And they died or on, <laughs> online. It was like, oh yeah, my dog, my dog ate a cocktail stick and it died. So that didn't really help me to feel any better. And what I thought was, well, it was wooden. So if I drink a lot of water, then it will soften it. And as it happened, I never died. So it's it was like eleven years ago. So I'm I'm pretty confident that um, I beat that cocktail stick. I win. Cocktail stick zero. Henry won. Let's go back to the sheet now. What is the horrible thing or situation that you are worried may happen? Now, now this was as very, very triggering for my anxiety when I swallowed that cocktail stick. Okay, so what was I worried about? What was the worst part of the case scenario? The worst case scenario was that it was gonna puncture my uh, tummy tubes and work its way to my heart and stab me in the heart and I died. Or any number of places it could have stabbed me in and I could have just bled to death from the inside. Okay, so that's what I was worried about. And I had good reason to be worried. Two, as a percentage, how dreadful do you feel? Oh, horrible. I felt really, really, really horrible. So as a percentage, I'd say 85% because it was like, it was all encompassing fear at the time. For, you know, whenever I thought about it, it would kind of envelop me in this terror. Okay, three. How likely, as a percentage, is it that this nightmarish circumstance could happen? Well, I had swallowed the cocktail stick. It was there in my body. Let's just say 50%. And let's say it was a 50% chance that it could happen. Okay. What evidence is there that this total cluster of doom is going to happen? I've seen loads of stories online about people's dogs dying from swallowing cocktail sticks, the exact same thing. <sighs> but there, it wasn't people, okay, and and not all of them died, and it was wood, so if you drink a lot of fluids, it will soften it, just become some fibrous material that you swallowed. And um, has it happened before? Okay, not to me, not to anyone I've known on, I, I, I could find online, but it has happened to a, the odd dog. So I'm still a bit worried. One key important thing is that I have looked at the worst possible outcome. A lot of the time when we're frightened of something, we still don't, we still hesitate to, to really go there and imagine the worst case scenario. So 
one of the things that this sheet does earlier on is it gets you to go there and, and, and know what the worst case scenario is that you're frightened of. What is that thing? It helps you. Five, A, if it really happened, what could you do about it? Okay, so this cocktail stick, it's, it's like I can feel it now, it's, it's stabbing me and I've got this pain inside, perhaps a bit of like, I feel a bit sick. If it really happened though, what could I do about it? Right, well, my, I, I, would, I would get a warning sign from my body that I'm not very well. Okay, um, I, I would, you wouldn't just die straight away. It wouldn't be just like, Ugh! it wouldn't be like that. It would hurt, I would feel bad. That warning sign from my body would be a prompt for me to go to the hospital, okay? And I'd go to the hospital, they would do some sort of scan or whatever, and they would be able to tell, or maybe I'd have like a camera put down my throat, and they would be able to tell and see what had happened. Or maybe if, it were, if the pain was lower down, the camera would have to go from the bottom upwards. Either way, well, they would investigate and find out what had happened, and hopefully they would be able to do some sort of operation and save my life. Question 5b, would it then be okay? <sighs> yeah, it would be okay. I don't think that I would suddenly drop dead without any warning at all. I think I would just be very ill and then I would go to the hospital quickly and then I'd be saved. So, so actually I would be okay. Would it then be okay? And if not, how long before it would be okay? Okay, so, so let's say I couldn't work because of the scars. Yeah, okay, it might be, might be a couple of weeks before I could go back to work and then it would be okay. Then I'd be back to normal. Maybe a bit embarrassed. Question six, is there a more likely scenario or outcome? Okay, the more likely scenario or outcome is that this stick got squashed about in my tummy and softened by the um, pints of beer. And the more likely scenario is it will find its way out of my body and I will be fine. Do you know what? Now I've started thinking about it. <laughs> What if it's still there? What if it's still stuck in my body now? Um, if you know about this sort of thing, if you're a doctor, can you please get in touch and let me know? Because now <laughs> I'm starting to worry about it now. It will have gone, won't it? It will have gone. It's been 11 years. It's been 11 years. I feel fine. I feel fine. Think of all the drinks I've drunk. All of the, yeah, there's no way that it's, there's no way it's still there. What if it's like, Oh no, now I'm giving myself a panic attack. But question seven, what could you do about the more likely scenario? Well, I wouldn't need to do anything in this scenario. If it just leaves my body, I just wait until it's gone. I just, all I can do is wait and then it will go. Perhaps maybe I could have gone to the doctor before, but as it happens, I have had a camera down my throat since then, because I've also once ate a KFC too quick and I swallowed, a <laughs> I swallowed a chicken bone. Yeah, a few years ago, I was wolfing down a KFC and I wolfed down a chicken bone and it scratched me all the way down and I panicked again. And I did go to the hospital and they did put a camera down and I was fine. Maybe I've actually got a lot in common with dogs. Maybe I need to eat more carefully and more slowly. Um, I think, I, well, I, I already figured that a bit out and I do eat more carefully and more slowly nowadays. Yeah, so that's what you should do and that's what I did do the next time it happened and it hasn't happened again. But I, you go to the hospital and then they, they check you out and they tell you if you're okay and you, you might be okay, you might not be okay. I was okay, okay? Finally, there's question eight. As a percentage, how dreadful do you feel now? Well... I've, what's by this point you've gone into the details of the thing that you're frightened of the thing that you're anxious about and you've really gone there and really thought about the the full catastrophic nature of the worst case scenario and you've thought about what it would mean what would you have to do and then you've also thought about what's a more likely scenario and what would you do in that case and you know you go through these questions and hopefully Normally, usually, you'll be feeling a bit better by the end of it, okay? So, the TARS Henry mood stabilizing algorithm will hopefully be useful to you in times of anxiety, in times of great worry or stress. If you go through these eight questions, 
like we've just done today, then you've, you've got every chance of feeling a, a, a quite a lot better, significantly better as a percentage that you rate it yourself by the end of it. Now, I hope that's been of some kind of service or use to you. I hope it's helpful. And if you are worried or anxious about anything, uh, if you feel like your life is kind of unmanageable and you're unhappy, then there's no reason not to look into cognitive behavioural therapy or some kind of therapy that, that perhaps your doctor or GP might recommend to you because it's more appropriate, you know, but there's no, no shame in getting therapy. Anybody, I could recommend it to anybody. Okay. So, but if you're not going to, if you, if you don't feel like you need therapy or you haven't, you literally, you can't afford it or you, or if you feel like you just need this, then it's free. Here you go. It's the Tars Henry mood stabilizing algorithm and it's just for you. Okay, so feel free to use it anytime. It's on my Instagram. Yeah, so that's it. Right, okay, I'll see you later, guys. I'd better go, because, um, yeah, I've got to go. But it's, uh, I hope it's been nice talking to you again. And thanks for coming along to the Tars Henry Channel show. Okay, I'll see you later on. I'll see you next week. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> Henry Channel Show.